Hello guys, and welcome back to Strategic Command World War II. World at War with our allied playthrough. In the last episode, France finally fell, but it fell to the Italians, which is quite interesting. Vichy France was formed. We got French Equatorial Guinea forming the foundation of the Free French, and eventually we'll get Polynesia as well. We took care of the UK, which had quite a lot to do, and America, which was a lot shorter. Now for a short one, or as I expect to be a short one, let's look at the USSR. We actually are getting a new unit, a mechanized unit. I'm not fully aware of how well or otherwise a mechanized infantry unit will perform, but I expect it to be quite mobile, probably a hard target, and I expect it will be needed somewhere mobility will be required. We have some weak fronts to worry about. But the problem is, it could do really well, maybe not in the center, but in the south and the north. So I kind of have to figure out where it goes. And in terms of the free units that we'll be getting for the USSR in the future, well, thankfully, it's not one of a kind, because we're going to be getting another cavalry unit. I looked at the stats, and it's definitely a heavier version of a cavalry, less focused on recon, and more of, like, putting a core or something into a vehicle and then giving it extra demoralization abilities to the enemies so we're gonna want this somewhere that is more accurately going to need it that is gonna be more of a mobile front and that's probably gonna be somewhere up to the north I don't exactly know yet how it can be super useful but I'll put the second cavalry down south and I'll focus all the big hitters up here on the north I'm thinking somewhere up here so we can maybe respond to anything going on around here but I'm also thinking around Smolensk, so it could fill in any problems that this line runs into. Due to knowing I'm going to get at least one more cavalry for free, I think I'll prioritize it much further north. So it can respond to any threats around Leningrad, but also the center line. So we're going to go ahead and place it right next to Peskov here, out in the clear, where it can begin to entrench. Not that I think it's going to be relying on those entrenchments very much. We also have the first engineers that have finished the fortifications that they were building here. And we could definitely do with having some more of those along this line. As for where to put fortifications next, I'm going to say we just swap out with the core right here. And then begin fortifying facing left in this forest. Same kind of setup. Two sides facing left is all we need. And the first core here will take up these entrenchments that have been left behind. I, again, really, I just want to make sure it's super hard to break through here. If they do end up breaking through, I want them to come through a very specific path. And so I can hopefully collapse and around them, or at least just neuter their offensive capabilities. I want the path to Moscow to be long and hard, even if the southern area is going to end up being a lot more mobile. The path to Stalingrad did, in real life, kind of go that way as the Germans tried to reach the Caucasus. There's a lot of important stuff down here, but I only have one engineer, and the most important thing for us to protect is Moscow. We will get new units for free, and also when we're fully mobilized and we have America and the UK pumping MPPs into the USSR, we will have the ability to purchase a lot more in the middle of it, you know? But until we get in the middle of it, it's going to be a little bit hard to adequately prepare, unfortunately. No upgrades have trickled in yet, so I'm thinking what would be really, really good to start throwing at our units since we're not committed to a frontal defensive, since the game is just going to spawn a bunch of units there anyway, which I'm confident will die. Um, I'm thinking anti-air defense could be pretty nice, because we don't look like we're going to have a whole lot of air protection, and I have seen what the German air can do. So I'm going to go ahead and put some points into researching anti-aircraft defense and hopefully once all the MPPs start rolling in later we could just rapidly start assigning upgrades to our line here to have them be as prepared as possible for when the time comes. We now have 323 MPPs for India. It will be until 42 or shortly after the UK would end up at war with Japan where we start getting HQs, I think the special forces, and a core for free. So we need to start making things now if we want to do something earlier. Although, you know, 41 is just a drop away, really. Our diplomacy chits are allocated. Our And, you know, I, I don't know if I really did the right thing with them because they're seeing no progress. Our research is full. 
So I was thinking, since I plan on sending the Indians into Africa to help the Brits there, and since Africa is going so poorly right now due to the lack of supply and the dug-in positions of the enemies, what could help break that? Now, initially, I wanted an army because armies are strong. Armies are good, especially looking at places like France and China where armies would make or break the difference. But that's not really what's happening in Africa. I'm realizing most of what we're fighting are garrisons, and at best we're fighting cores, and even if there is an army, supply is a huge limiting factor. Now, I don't have any supply destroyers here, but I have something that I figure could help, especially with the South Africans, especially if they link up with the Sudanese, that could help break any sieges and make it less costly on my side in the long run. Something that's very limited, and that would be making a heavy artillery unit. 200 MPPs, it would arrive January 11th, 1941, and then we could hopefully ship it out there and help with breaking any gridlock. We'd have two heavy arty pieces in Africa. I think that would work out quite well. They already have plenty of HQs over there to support them, especially if we could unify all that with uh, the group in Egypt, because I imagine Libya might become a battleground, and then who knows where it could go from there. But since we're going to have Australia and Malaya and everything focusing on Japan, that frees up India to assist the UK on India's dime, you see? So the UK doesn't even have to pay for all the transporting and moving things around. Now, unfortunately, India can't have a navy, so transporting things will be fun without the assistance of the UK. We do have one submarine over here that could maybe help for ah, just moving things around, keeping an eye on things. We might actually want to get our other submarine moving over here as well, just to clear the waters and try and make sure there's nothing here waiting for any Indian transports. But I think I'm going to go do that. I think I'm going to get a heavy artillery to support the infantry corps that are already present from the UK in Africa. I think that would be the best thing I can do. So let's go ahead and purchase that. India's now down to 123 MPPs. All we can really get now are garrisons and anti-air, so we're going to save on to the rest of those MPPs for the time being. I'm really hoping that once those artillery pieces get delivered, they can really help crack down Ethiopia and the other Italian holdings and hopefully help make a much stronger force up here once it comes time to it because this is the primary force, you know? This is this is it. we got a French force over here too, but our UK MPPs are severely limited, even sending everything that we can from India to the UK and that goes for pretty much everybody everyone is pretty much has a set amount that they're sending except India can actually customize it as a major but 25% is the max we can do now that we've diverted the convoys oh that's probably still better for us in the long run UK to USSR mobilization dang this doesn't start until USSR is fully mobilized I'm very sad to see that America did not get mobilized enough after the fall of France to begin lend lease to the UK, but those destroyer for bases and things like that will hopefully, hopefully come in handy. Look at Iceland over here. Iceland's in the Allies, and yet I can declare war on them. Does that go for, like, everything? Does that just work with everything? Yeah, it does. South Africa's in the Allies, and I could declare war on them if I wanted to. Oh, okay. Well, good to know the game gives me the option. Now, all that's remaining to really look at this turn is going to be the Chinese. Oh, the beautiful Chinese. I love you, bastards. The supply situation over here has really improved because I've diverted our HQ away from the defensive line here and more towards the south. Thankfully, the HQ at Yi Chang is taking up the... I don't know the word for it. The, the slack. It's picking up the slack. We do have some... Japanese offensives that have gone underway, especially under the 5th Army here, but the losses this time are a lot less. So we're going to go ahead and reinforce that. Readiness and morale back over the 50% mark. This heavy artillery is really coming in handy. They keep trying to go on the offensive here, but the heavy artillery is really making it, in my opinion, not worth it for them. Our encirclement of this core is completed, although... One of our Chinese corps here has taken a bit of a beating. We'll go ahead and reinforce him on the spot because he's clearly a tempting target for the opponents. Let's start where things are, funny enough, the simplest, which is in the south, where once upon a time we were making big gains and now it's slowed to a crawl because we're fighting a corps that just refuses to die against our corps. It doesn't even have any upgrades, but it's gaining experience. 
I don't know how long this guy can hold out, but I guess we'll find out. Let's go ahead and attack with the fifth core. Oh yeah, that experience is just going up. Swap out with a Moy. Its entrenchment can't hold. Okay, we dealt the damage. That's something. That's good. I'll take that. Let's attack again. Unfortunately, still no progress. Swap out. Attack. And damn, still nothing. So unfortunately, our offensive in the south is just fizzling out. These cores are not enough to break through. We'd need armies or we would need some kind of upgrade. And infantry weapons, infantry warfare, all this stuff is still researching. We don't have a lot of research going on as the Chinese, but I'm doing my best. We got advanced fighters. That's cool. I can maybe move this fighter now to support a different part of the line, especially I think in the north. The north is going to start needing fire uh, fighter cover the center line where it's important is covered by anti-air and the opponents are just they're, they're making it hell we're doing the best we can in my opinion with our mpps at least i'm trying to do the best i can we're gonna hold where we are up here i think they're just gonna keep taking the bait of attacking the not as entrenched army while the core just gets nice and cozy up here we have an entire core we could wipe out here should we Aim to go in that direction, and aim to go in that direction I shall. I think killing one of the Japanese's more limited units, you know, uh, 150 MPPs worth here is probably pretty good. So we have an army in reserve here, the 42nd Army, that was once guarding a front and is now not, is not needed up here anymore. But holy crap, look at the Elcor here, getting beaten into submission again. Finally getting pushed back into fortifications. All right, we're going to go ahead and reinforce them. They're going to stay back in these fortifications. Yeah, this is brutal. This Wuhan defensive line and also this right here has been very, very brutal on us. But keeping them distracted has kept them away from everything else and is leading to the opportunities that we currently have. So we're going to move the 42nd Army forward where it's going to encounter this core. Now, unfortunately, the core is entrenched and we don't have a lot of good chances to break it down so we're gonna start with the one army that has an actual good amount of capacity against them somehow which is going to be the 12th army we're going to attack with the 12th army we got two kills in and we only lost one that's good this enemy core is experienced but this is getting its entrenchment down readiness morale even lower now can anyone else get anything good yes in fact we're starting to get much better odds here the 23rd army which is in no immediate danger unless they start cycling away from peking which if they did they would give me ground moving up to peking to move my artillery i don't think they'll do that let's go ahead and attack with the 23rd army dealing two kills and losing nothing nice and this is breaking their entrenchment and everything down even more let's go ahead and take the 42nd army that i moved forward and attack as well two kills one suffered this is working out pretty well and now our cores our cores are getting opportunities to deal some damage let's see what we can do let's take this core and attack because this core is kind of safe we dealt one we lost two not the best but it's not the worst we're doing i'm gonna take the 12th army i'm gonna swap it back into this field it's not gonna have any entrenchments here but it'll allow us to swap the second core in Oof. which can get an attack off we'll go and attack with this core first all right, we got the enemy down to its last leg. Come on, Second Corps. I know it says we're just going to lose and not kill, but the enemy entrenchments are gone. Their supplies are running out. You can do it. Yes! No casualties. We Oh, never mind. <laughs> we took one casualty, but this town, I'd say, is officially secure. I'm going to go ahead and take this core that suffered the most casualties, use it to secure the enemy town. These guys will have some reinforcing to do next turn. This army is, well, it's not really in danger, but it could use a chance to recover. And our infantry manpower over here is honestly just more than enough. So I'm going to move it back into the nearby fortifications where it'll get a chance to recover next turn. I'm going to move the engineers forward up to where it was. I'm going to start setting up fortifications facing across the river in its place not that this is necessarily going to be necessary but due to our manpower on the north i don't expect to anything to come from the north and this allows the engineers to help hold the front line and do something potentially valuable in the meantime these fortifications are still proving handy as fallback positions from our vast offensives i will take the opportunity to recover anybody on the front that can be recovered 
A lot of these guys just saw a battle. I'm not going to attack with this core. This core can just mind its own business. This army is not going to move any further in the fighter, though. The fighter is going to have to move somewhere. We have eight supply here. We're going to want to move it somewhere that it can protect this horde of units because the anti-air's got this pretty much covered. The south isn't... While the south has the strongest, like, Japanese placements, it's not in any danger i'd say it's it's really not especially we got the special forces coming up the top of the south i guess move them into fortifications across the river they'll be able to really help here very soon against these armies that are just we've had a terrible time trying to break down we've gotten these two armies back up to snuff that's pretty cool so the fighters are going to start covering the north more than anything i'm not sure I wish I could see as I move exactly what these fuckers could cover in terms of, yeah, like, it's just what they could cover in general. We want to place them somewhere that has high supply and is not going to be in immediate harm's way, which could be this town back here at Yanku. It's these yellow markers is what it can protect. So it can protect that entire front, it can protect up here, it can even still protect everything down here. It's just not going to be able to protect anything on the southern half of the front. I wish we had another fighter. We do not. But this will function for now. It's in pretty high supply. It can cover everything that I want it to cover. So that's good. Now, let's try peeling away at these HQs because we know these HQs, we've seen it in France, cost a lot to recover. Unfortunately, not dealing any damage there. I am not reckless enough to charge down here, yet these three armies are still killer. So we'll swap back with this army, which... Do they even have fortifications here? Okay, they do, facing across the river. That's good. These guys are in a mountain with almost no fortifications every turn, being very brazen with them, but it's working out. Got two damage on the HQ. All right, that's better than nothing. Every time they have to sit down and recover the HQ, is a turn that they're not moving. It's a turn they're not adjusting. It's a turn they're not assigning elite reinforcements into it. So if we do even one damage, I'm quite happy with that. And it assists in breaking through this line. Oh, and I just noticed when an army dies that you've previously paid for, you can reorder it for cheaper. Like 250 is the base cost. But because the first army died, I can call it back for only 150. I did not know this was a mechanic because I've never really been in this situation. I've never lost a unit like this. That's cool. So reforming an army can be the price of a new core, which means, of course, we would get that. However, what we are lacking right now is not in bodies. Even with that army gone, we have more than enough bodies. And in fact, I believe... June of 41, so that's around Barbarossa time, March of 41. We're going to get two more armies and some light tanks. The only light tanks we'll be able to field, according to the hard caps. Oh, but we can get normal sized tanks as well at some point. Something that could be incredibly helpful in my opinion. And I think it's already proving itself up in the north here is another heavy artillery, as we can have a total of two of them as per the hard caps. So, I think I will go ahead and spend the rest of China's MPPs getting another heavy artillery. This one, I imagine I'll deploy to the south, as I kind of originally intended to, if not to, you know, maybe push some fronts over here, as a, you know, supporting force, maybe to break Haiko. Maybe I can send the core up, send an arty behind it, and then we can just shell this repeatedly until we can eventually break through it. Maybe, yeah, maybe, I don't know. That's kind of an idea. I guess both, both things I'm recruiting are heavy artillery, but they're proving very handy for me right now against the AI. I don't know if this would hold up against a player, but against the AI, heavy artillery is proving very handy. Now, I could save up for some other things, right? Maybe some more fighters. Maybe I could research. But I feel like this would be more imminently handy to me than anything else for the time being. And China is still pulling in plenty of MPPs thanks to the Hanoi Kunming Railway. So we will take advantage of that and go ahead and purchase another heavy artillery. That will be deployed in January 41. 41, man, that's gonna be a big year. Barbarossa and Pearl Harbor, oh boy. With that, I believe we've taken full advantage of everything that we can do this turn. It's time to end turn. See what the Axis and the events have in store for us. British morale is shaken by the French surrender. That's unfortunate. Germany celebrates the defeat of France, yes. 
The first sea lord, Sir Dudley Pound, argues the only way to prevent the French fleet from ever being used against us is to attack and sink it at port. Some French battleships could end up in German hands should they conquer Algeria or where the Vichy authorities to join the Axis. It's therefore proposed we launch Operation Catapult to strike at the French fleet. Carrying out this attack will cost 35 MPPs and we must be prepared for a strong diplomatic reaction from the Vichy authorities. Would you like to launch Operation Catapult to ensure these French ships never end up in Axis hands? This act would definitely sour relations between us and the new Vichy authorities, but the consequences of not doing so could be far worse, as the presence of the French fleet on the Axis side could possibly tip the balance of the war at sea in their favor. If you say yes, then the French fleet will be attacked. In response, Vichy and Algeria will move 35-50% to 50 towards the Axis, and French bombers based in Algeria will retaliate by bombing the Gibraltar. If you say no, then should Vichy Algeria join the Axis or be conquered by the Axis, then Germany will gain a strength 5 battleship at Casablanca and a full strength battleship at Algiers. Ooh. Now, I know in real life, the fleet was attacked, and so that would prevent the Germans from getting two entire battleships. However... Vichy France and Algeria moving towards them is pretty brutal. I don't quite... yeah. I think Vichy would just come under attack eventually anyway, but that's primarily Vichy. I don't know about Algeria. They'd have to go through Tunisia or do some naval landings anyway. Alright, I mean, I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna take the risk. It's specifically Vichy Algeria that would have to fall to the Axis or join it in order for them to get those two battleships. If they do get the battleships, then, you know, sinking them could help with national morale. I don't find it likely that an AI is going to march into Algeria. I know they'll take Vichy eventually, but Algeria? If they even try it, I can send my full carrier fleet and capital ship fleet over there to assist Algeria. I'm keeping it close for a reason. It's going to be ready. I think I'm going to take the risk. I'll keep the 35 MPPs, and I'm I'm not going to move Vichy towards the Axis, and I'm going to take the risk that this just never comes to pass. Let's see. It is proposed we launch an attack on Dakar in French West Africa using Royal Marines and Free French units. Some of the gold reserves of the French, Belgian, and Polish governments are held there, and their capture could prove of significant financial worth. If successful, de Gaulle's prestige will increase and our own economic situation could be improved by the capture of the gold reserves. Nevertheless, attacking Dakar could trigger the Vichy authorities in France and North Africa to swing 5 to 8% towards the Axis. Preparing an attack on Dakar, codename Operation Menace, will cost us 30 MPPs. Okay. Would you like to launch Operation Menace and Raid Dakar? Where is Dakar? French West Africa, that's Dakar, okay. Notes, the raid has only a 20% chance of success, but if successful, the UK will receive 2000 or 200 MPPs representing the capture of gold reserves, British national morale will rise by 1000 points. If unsuccessful, Algeria and Tunisia all have a 20% chance of moving 5 to 8% towards the Axis. Now this is much different. 35 to 50 percent towards the axis is huge. 5 to 8 percent is not, but there's only a 20 percent chance that this even succeeds and gives us our money back. There is an 80 percent chance that it fails, and if it fails, there's a further 20 percent chance on top of that that the enemies move 5 to 8 percent towards the axis at all. So this is a pretty huge gamble, but for only 30 MPPs, I think this is a gamble I'll be more willing to take. This is literally a gamble. If we can turn 30 into 200, that's great. If we fail, oh well. And we'd have to, you know, really, really fail. You know, critical failure, roll a one, D&D &D shit, to actually have the Tunisians and Algerians move towards the Axis. But I don't think 5 to 8% is all that significant. We're going to go ahead and launch Operation Menace. For sure. The Triumphant is seized at Plymouth and given to the Free French Navy. Oh. Which means the UK. Land units continue west. Okay. Land units continue west. You know what? Some of these are air units. You know that? I, I don't know why it says land. The Gaul announces in the BBC France has lost a battle, but France has not lost the war. 
Representatives from Poland, France, Canada, and the UK vowed to continue the fight. Is that De Gaulle? That looks like De Gaulle, that rat bastard. Germany, Italy, and Japan signed the Tripartite Pact. Ooh. And, ooh, industrial technology development for the UK. Oh, that's so handy. That means more MPPs. Same thing with the USSR. Yes. Okay, already weapon development. Artillery weapon development. Interesting. All right. Uh, logistics development. Cool. All right. That's pretty cool. That's pretty nice. That'll increase the MPPs, the UK, and the USSR reeling in. We got to get that research continuing as soon as possible. That's for sure. China's still collecting via Hanoi Kunming Railway. Very happy about that. Still hasn't gotten interrupted. All right, let's zoom in. What do you have for me, Axis? Ooh, you're going pretty heavy after this destroyer. That destroyer is going to have to get to safety. The HQ retreated. It didn't reinforce. It retreated. And there's nothing to replace it. This looks like a reinforcement to me. Very passive, Japanese. Very passive. Oh, here we go. Anti-air defending against enemy air, raiding our army in the front. Then going on the offensive on cores that are out in the open. Okay, going on the offensive against cores. The Italians stepping out of their entrenchments to go on the offensive. Don't think that's too smart. But my attack there wasn't so smart either. The Germans are already lining up for Barbarossa in mass. Holy crap, man. Oh. Russian Poland's gonna fall, I have no doubt. This destroyer needs to get the hell out of Dodge as soon as is humanly possible. <laughs> as soon as is humanly possible. Uh, we're gonna probably end up moving that sub as well. British and Free French units fail to capture Dakar. God damn it. Well, that's 30 MPPs down the drain, but I don't believe Algeria, no, and Tunisia, they have not moved towards. So there goes 30 MPPs, but. It was worth a shot. The USSR does not currently have enough MPPs to research indie tech. It's more expensive for the USSR than for almost anybody else. America shares that price. I wonder if it's just because these two are not in the war. Maybe indie tech is harder to do because they're not in the war since it's more about making a wartime economy than anything else. So we're going to hold on to our USSR points and probably not do very much with them for the time being. You know, one thing I was thinking about doing is we should really move their light cruisers here into safer ports that are less likely to be threatened, which would be over here to the east. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to move the USSR ships into safer waters. One thing I noticed is that the Japanese were awfully light with their air raids, weren't they? They were awfully light. There was a, there was a few, right? There was some, but they were awfully light about it otherwise that was a pretty good turn for us we did go ahead and see that the germans are already getting troops in position for operation barbarossa it's october 1940 they're probably going to want to be ready for june so half a year maybe eight months from now something like that they have yet to have any of these guys join the axis but i'm sure it's coming um i wonder if they will historically invade through yugoslavia and deal with greece i forget if that happens during the invasion of Operation Barbarossa or before? I'm pretty sure it's before. I don't know, but we're out of time for this episode, so thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.